Argentina are going to be the team that qualify out of Pool D. Japan getting knocked out in the pool stage. Argentina taking this one 39 points to 27. What an awesome game this one was. Again, another great game I thoroughly enjoyed. This one was uh, a knockout game in everything but, you know, official name. It's not a quarterfinals. They weren't into the knockout stages, but we knew whoever won this was probably going on to be the uh, the qualifier from Group D, um, and whoever lost, unfortunately, was going to get knocked out. Now, we talk a lot in rugby about you know some of those cliches it's a game of two halves and all that nonsense this was this was more like if you've ever seen one of those like slapping competitions where it's just two great big hulking men taking turns slapping the hell out of each other until one of them is uh, is eventually knocked out what an enjoyable game this one was and although this wasn't a knockout game, you know, officially and what have you, if this is the baseline of what we can expect in the uh, the quarterfinals and the actual knockout stages, man, I'm really looking forward to uh, to some of these games. So the games literally just finished on my end. We'll have a run through of the uh, the games, some full time thoughts, give some reactions, and of course go over some of those uh, key highlights if you enjoy it. Hit the like button, all that good stuff. Um, a lot of tries. Eight tries in this game. Probably a few too many to go over uh, super in-depth along the way through. Um, in terms of the first off, then, Argentina getting off to a superb start. Uh, Chaco Perez going over for his first try for Argentina. Um, in the first two minutes of the game, great piece of individual work by him. Breaking through the tackle, charging up, getting a nice little step around the uh, the fullback and going over for his try. Boffelli converting that one, getting that one over. So uh, took a seven-point lead early on. Boffelli's kicking today. Not where we've seen it in the past. We've certainly seen him have uh, better kicking games. A little bit 50-50 in this one. Um, luckily, Sanchez did take over a little bit later on um, just to sort of sort out that kicking. Very surprised by uh, how many Boffelli was off uh, off today. After that first five minutes, though, uh, Japan really took over. I would say from five up to about 20 minutes was was all Japan going on the attack. We saw different styles of attack. Japan offers so many interesting little things. We saw Saito with a little bicycle kick over the top of his head and someone else chasing onto it. Like, I love that sort of stuff. Just different in ingenuity things that other teams aren't expecting and it seemed to be paying off they were getting right up to the, that five meter line um but argentina defending extremely well um it took until the, uh, the 16th minute for them to get over facatava with his try again another piece of individual work the lock out on the wing decided you know what hey i'm out here away we go got a little chip over the uh, the top of boffelli and the bounce favoring him um managing to catch his own ball and running over his uh, his try matsuda drawing them all level at uh, seven all apiece in that 17th minute uh labushagni got his yellow card in the 23rd that was head-on-head -head collision um to be honest at this point i've i've given up trying to guess what is going to be a red and yellow card um that was a head-on-head -head collision they gave mitigation for uh, the players stepping very late minute and that for it, it was not dangerous or not as dangerous could have been so not increased up to the um to the red card i'm kind of glad it wasn't because i think it helped this game flow a little bit better i'm kind of glad that stayed at a yellow card but in terms of the official ruling anymore it feels like game by game what's going to be a, a yellow card and a red card we've seen head on head just be a red card outright before mateo carreras getting his uh, his first try of three of the game in the um, in the 28th minute off the back of malia catching the ball on uh, on full tilt very well worked by him gets it out to bertrano shipping it out wide to a uh, as no one's chasing him um, down the wing. Now, although they got the try, I have to say the, the first half for me, after that first five minutes was over, it kind of felt like Argentina were playing a counter-attacking game. I don't really think we got to see them go on the offensive and really go through multi-phased attacks and felt like they were in control of that game. I would say Japan actually ran that half um, a lot better after that first five minutes. Um, but Argentina, something they were doing so well is just breaking away on those counter-attacks. Mateo Carreras' try is a perfect example of what happens with Japan's kicking today. The kick exits and the, the kicking choices felt a little bit off. Um, there was quite a few kicks throughout the day that just... I don't know, they're not even doing anything. No one's chasing the kicks. They're just sort of clearing their lines. They're just sort of relieving pressure from themselves. But no one's chasing. No one's putting the rest of the players back on side. And it just allowed Argentina to take so many of the high balls today, completely um, unchallenged in this game, and just go on the offensive. And so many of the, the Argentinian attacks that came in this game were off the back of Japan kicking it. And nothing happening with it and Argentina making uh, full advantage of it so I think Argentina will be uh, very happy with their counter-attack but Japan will need to go away and have a bit of a think about uh, some of those decisions Saito did manage to uh, equal out the scoreboard though with his try in the uh, the 38th minute converted over by Matsuda so 14 points to 15 at half time um, you have to feel like that was probably about right for where the game was at I feel like Japan were more in control of that uh, that first half um, but the Argentinian defence what they were doing correctly really putting a lot of pressure on that Japan team and causing 
and there was a lot of handling mistakes and little issues going for them. Um, the set piece is looking pretty good for both sides today. Um, line out and scrummaging. Japan even got a, um, a counter scrum and ran over Argentina. Not one I was expecting in this game. I thought Argentina would be well up for that uh, that physical game. Uh, but just the attacking side of Argentina, I wanted to see that shift um, in the second half, and we did get it. The second half working so much better for uh, for Argentina, though. The attack looked more controlled. They were going through the multi-phase attack. They were putting the pressure on, keeping the ball in hand. Mistakes were being mitigated down, um, and it led to those uh, those points getting on the board. Mateo Carreras getting over for, uh, for his second try of the game in the first five minutes, which is probably Argentina's best attack of the game. Um, just going through different styles of attack. They were really targeting the left wing um, and just recycling again and again and again, going through the forwards, go through that physicality, then spreading out very far to the right, getting all the way back to the left and narrowly attacking that wing again, just bunching up the uh, the Japanese defence and uh, Carreras managing to break through, going over for his uh, his second try. Buffelli getting that one over as well. Took them back out to the eight-point lead. Again, shrunk down straight away by Japan. Uh, Matsuda getting his uh, his penalty in the 52nd minute and Lemecki getting a drop goal. Again, something we haven't seen for a little bit of a while now in this uh, in this World Cup in the 56th minute, drawing them back to uh, 20 points to 22. So back down to a two-point game um, with only 20 minutes left in it. But Boffelli, who'd been kind of quiet throughout the game, the uh, the attack from the uh, from the winger not doing too much today. The boots again a bit 50-50 for me. But off the back of a uh, of a set piece off the scrum in the middle of the park, a lovely sort of training pitch um, set play, getting that out onto the wing and Boffelli getting over his try and converting his uh, his own one to put them back out to a nine point lead. But then again, brought back in by uh, by Japan, Nakabula getting over for his try in the 66th minute um, off the uh, the back of a tap and go actually and shipped out wide to him on the wing and Matsuda converting that one back over to bring them back um, to that two point close game. Um, but then towards the end of it is just where Argentina began to get into their stride, Japan falling off a bit. Mateo Carreras again with a lovely little bit of a solo effort, handoff of one, just beating defenders. Um, gets over for uh, for his third try of the match, getting his hat-trick, converted by Sanchez, and then Sanchez sealing out this game um, with a penalty right at the end. Japan had opportunities. Japan had opportunities. There was one try just before the Nakabula try. Um, Dylan Riley taking it into, uh, into contact when there was a three-on-one. Give that pass out while you score a try, you know, two, three minutes earlier on the clock, you buy yourself some more time um, to potentially get some more scores. They had one opportunity right at the end as well. A five metre line out, um, but again, disrupted by uh, by Argentina. The Argentinian defence today was uh, was very, very impressive. The way they were organising themselves, the physicality they brought to this game, actually very impressive. It's probably the best Argentina performance I've seen of this World Cup. Um, they didn't stop. For the full 80 minutes, the physicality was there at the set piece, at the line out. They were getting involved in every single line out. Someone was jumping for it. The breakdown situation, they were recycling their own ball quickly, but also just slowing down the Japanese ball because that is where Japan were, were scoring the points from, is being able to get the ball out wide quicker and put them under pressure. And slowing down the ball at the breakdown was uh, absolutely vital for, for Argentina. So Argentina taking this one 39 uh, points to 27, meaning they will go on to play Wales in the uh, in the quarterfinals and Wales and Argentina have had some awesome games in the past I'm looking forward to this Argentina feel like they're getting better um, as this tournament goes. and you think back to that first game against England and it was just the worst game I've ever seen by Argentina and how they've grown um, throughout this tournament. They've made some changes in the team and who they're going to be starting players and stuff. Mateo Carreras for me has to start against that Wales team. They've tried out different people on that left wing. Mateo Carreras was was exceptional today. Um, so I think he deserves to start. Few injury concerns maybe though. Um, Pablo Matera went off looking very, um, very unwell. Um, very, you know, hobbling on that leg. So uh, hopefully we'll be seeing him in this team. But um, if not, they'll have to make some changes to that back row. Boffelli did also look like he picked up a couple of knocks in this game um maybe he'll be okay but uh, sanchez did take over the kicking duties later on maybe that's because they you know believe in sanchez kicking over boffelli maybe he's just to rest that leg because he did look like he picked up a bit of an injury santiago carreras was also you know lying down on the ground at one point holding his uh, his leg too so a couple of injuries a physical old game but um, a lot of positives for uh, for argentina to take away from this one um the physicality they'll probably bring next week versus wales will probably that full 80 minutes of defense um and one thing i want to just quickly say about this Argentina team is what they brought in terms of the attack today you look at the scoreboard for, for Argentina it's all backs it's all backs N none of this is the forwards when you think of Argentina you think of this physical team it's driving malls they're going to go for the scrums 
This, for me, more resembles the Argentina team we saw like last year versus Scotland. They played that best of three versus Scotland. One of the best attributes Argentina had was the backs and the way they were launching, the way they were attacking. And you just had the backs playing off each other. You had Sinti, you had Santiago Carreras was involved um, in running the ball. Chaco Perez, Boffelli, Juan Imhoff was getting in there. They had so many different players in the, in the backs that were just playing off each other and going on the offensive and going on the attack. Um, and it was so nice to see it again. I feel like Argentina sometimes gets stuck in their own ability of we've got really solid forwards, we've got a big physical game. But if you give it to the backs, this is what happens. The whole thing is from the backs, and that's where all their big points are being scored today. I think if they carry on playing like that and stick to the backs and don't do what they did against England and a bit against Samoa, where they just stuck with the forwards and just wanted to play only the power game, the backs is where they um, they have a lot of very, very talented players, and I think they could go on to do very well um, throughout the rest of this World Cup. But there we have it, guys. Let me know your thoughts down in the comment section on this game. Argentina going on to the, uh, the quarterfinals versus Wales. Very exciting stuff. Um, commiseration to Japan. I know Japan's a lot of people's sort of second teams in the uh, in the World Cup who you want to see uh, do well, but unfortunately um, they won't be doing as well as they did in that 2019 World Cup. Uh, we're off now to uh, finish off the round with some other really, uh, really fun games. Tonga versus Romania and Fiji versus Portugal. Looking forward to, uh, to catch that one, guys. Make sure you are subscribed to the channel to know when all the latest videos go up. I'll see you all next time, guys. Bye-bye.